Hi guys and girls. Uh, welcome to the computing workshop. I am the mad computer scientist and this is my workshop. So <clears throat> got some time <clears throat> to pop into the workshop again uh, to um, go over a, a topic that uh, I was actually asked by a BITS member, uh, an old friend of mine. Uh, he wanted to have a something that is quite common these days. He wanted to get back into his roots of DOS uh, gaming. Uh, many people today that get a machine for uh, DOS maybe have started with DOS box or, or similar types of, of tools to run old DOS games and, and it's also becoming popular even with the younger generation that wasn't around when when we were around to actually play the games when they were new but they are rediscovering these games and then they run into uh, compatibility issues with DOSBox it's not the best by any means uh, and it's not even close to actual hardware they may even try PCEM and 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 do more proper emulation uh, and uh, but they get interested in the original hardware so they want to start experimenting and maybe having their own DOS games machine and then the discussion I was asked this question what is the best machine to get and what is the best way to go about it so I was thinking a bit on this question from uh, uh, and uh, now uh, I'm preparing a machine uh, here for this purpose and I would like to take this workshop time to go over and to to recommend what I think this is my opinion what I think is the best you could buy parts and build uh, a DOS gaming machine then you would have to live with all kinds of, uh, of trouble with getting stuff working you have to uh, get into the era when when building a PC wasn't like putting together five bricks of Lego like it is today uh, it, it, it demanded some uh, actual attention to detail uh, you had to get the jumper settings right you had various other issues you had compatibility issues between motherboards and and certain types of CPUs you have to uh, yeah, and 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 may sometimes the cards, the the add-on cards didn't work properly because you had to have the right DOS TSRs loaded, which could be uh, uh, all sorts of hell in itself. Um, so uh, it, it it took a bit of uh, a bit of work, uh, and, and it still does. And it's also the fact that parts are getting scarcer, so if you want to build from scratch, you would have to find compatible hardware and then you have to look around. It's doable and it's quite fun. It's actually quite simple as well, so it's not like it's uh, tremendously hard, but it's uh, uh, sourcing the parts may take a while and then you must also sort, source other things like keyboard and monitor and so on. Uh, so it might become expensive uh, to some uh, and 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 uh, it also might be hard to 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 find all the, the needed parts uh, that you want so my recommendation now uh, would be to get uh, what I think is the optimal DOS gaming PC that you should be on the lookout for and that's this one uh, these machines were, this is a compact Presario, and, and they were, compact made a bunch of these uh, Presario all-in-ones, and we will see this now when I, uh, you, I will discuss what an all-in-one is in case you don't know. It's quite self-explanatory, but this is the CDS5 series, so this is a CDS524. The 4 stands for Quad Speed CD-ROM. This is a typical multimedia machine. Compact released this this particular series, which is, in my opinion, the best of them all. In 1994, 
I think but this one was built in this particular one I have a few of these but this particular one was built in 1995 June of 1995 I think uh, according to the model code <clears throat> so um, an all-in-one machine like this one uh, is a form factor that looks like this the monitor is included with the PC this is one these aren't detachable this is one the whole cube is one singular unit it's like a very nice cube shape and the reason why this is a very good thing to get is because you get what I would consider pretty much optimal specifications for VGA era DOS games but also compatibility with CGA uh, EGA games um, you get very very good excellent fit on the specifications you could get a faster machine but then you run the risk of having uh, compatibility issues you could get a slower machine but then the 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 later DOS games will not run uh, as good so this is an excellent machine this CDS 524 series especially the or the CDS 520 which is basically the same thing but it didn't come with a quad speed CD-ROM drive these were originally multimedia computers but they solve a bunch of different issues uh, that people that are wanting maybe thinking about moving from DOS box or something like that into actual hardware may, may have uh, and that is finding the right parts uh, getting an optimum specification and getting a CRT monitor and saving space. Those are some of the reasons why people may not uh, make the move from DOSBox or PCEM emulation into actual hardware, which is, of course, superior uh, to those alternatives. But this all-in-one machine gives you uh, the gr great specifications, uh, great compatibility, a built-in, very very good monitor. This is not a, this is not a, uh, a throw-on, uh, cheap CRT. This is a very very good monitor in these, and and it also gives you the small cube-shaped all-in-one form factor, which takes up very little space. Uh, to have. You don't need to have a separate uh, tower AT case or a separate huge monitor. You get this nice cube which you can put on a shelf. You can take it out when you want to play some DOS games. You also got built-in speakers here on the front for the audio. So you may, may not even feel the need for a separate speaker set. Which is why these are machines. These machines are so nice to have these days uh, when you want to get back into DOS gaming on actual hardware. Uh, so I just wanted to recommend this. I also recommended this to uh, to my friend, uh, being on the lookout for the CDS models, especially the CDS 5 model, the 520, 524. Uh, with this, and also they look really good, as you can see here. They look they look very good this cube shape is actually really really nice uh, and has a quite a clean good aesthetic to it this one uh, I have prepared this one with a compact flash card which I recommend that you also do get one of these uh, and these are you should if you if you think about it this may one of these may run you I think a realistic pricing would be a hundred to a hundred and fifty US dollars or something like that for a unit like this in a good condition, a good working condition. Uh, you shouldn't pay more than that, I think, but say a hundred uh, to a hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, maybe you can even find it for free because this were these were quite common at least in Europe as home computers. These were sold as multimedia computers. Um, so, if you're lucky, you may even find one for free. But for for that price, a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars, if that US dollars, if that is what you pay for it, um, you would have to consider also that it would have costed you su substantially more to obtain all all of the parts separately and a good CRT monitor with uh, 
uh, and and then you had to put it together and all all of those things. Uh, but this one I have also kitted out with a compact flash card here with an adapter, an IDE to compact flash adapter. This is a bit tricky on these models because compact for some inexplicable reason uh, decided that the machine will not boot from uh, a hard drive that hasn't been prepared by the compact disk tools which are now uh, not that easy to find. I have a copy of the disk tools which I use to prepare this compact flash card and, and now it works fine as a primary IDE uh, hard drive in the machine. The machine by default supports 8 gigabytes uh, uh, size hard drives. This is a 2 gigabyte compact flash card. Plenty of room on this machine. And I was saying before with the ideal specifications of this machine uh, as well. When you look at for DOS gaming you want compatibility as wide as possible. This machine I would say gives you exceptional DOS gaming performance for anything from uh, say mid to late 80s up until uh, the the last of the of the DOS VGA games around 1994 1995 something like that you would have full compatibility across across the board with, with excellent results uh, and the specifications are read like a like a, a, a dream list for the ultimate DOS gaming build by default because it has a 486 uh, this this series it has a 486 DX2 at 66 megahertz which is right at the sweet spot it will run Doom excellently but it will also run some older titles at correct speeds for instance also run some of the later titles like I don't know System Shock things like that what people like to play I don't know uh, but it will run that exceptionally well it has onboard memory but it also has two expansion slots for RAM so this one has been expanded to a total of 36 megabytes of RAM because that means uh, 32 megabyte on stick and 4 megabyte on board um, uh, I think that's what I recall it's been a while since I upgraded this but the, it has onboard RAM uh, which is on but, on, but then it has two it has uh, slots for additional RAM um, that you can put in and uh, of course I advise to do that because it's quite weak I actually don't remember it's 4 8 I think it's 4 megabyte of, of onboard RAM which is like nothing uh, so you <laughs> for the later DOS games that's not gonna fly so you you need especially the later memory extended games you 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 need more so you uh, have so I added memory to this one so this one should have 36 megabytes of RAM which is kind of a sweet spot as well uh, you could go up to you could go to say 24 or something like that or 36 uh, 36 is uh, I think this is a sweet spot uh, so this 486 exact sweet spot it's brilliant for DOS games um, and well, once expanded memory is also really on the sweet spot maximum is 64 megabytes I think in total to get uh, with the onboard RAM included in that count um, also compact flash card makes it uh, it's a very good upgrade to do uh, but on the other hand, this one even takes it, it. It works fine with DVD drives or something like that. So if you want to make, you want to put a DVD drive in here and 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 write DVD discs with games and things like that, and use the original hard drive and then just copy them over. That's fine as well, uh, assuming that the original hard drive works. Uh, then it also got it's also got an, an integrated sound chip, an ESS chip that is uh, fully this has, this one actually has one of the best sound Blaster pro and 16 compatibilities that I've ever seen it's 
fully compatible and I really mean fully compatible because I've tested it with the Sound Blaster test suites and it actually passes the test suites uh, without any issues uh, so not only will the games look excellent on this the monitor is really really good and there's also a Cirrus Logic VGA ship on board as well which is a very very good and a very very compatible video DAC uh, and this excellent monitor and you also have full out-of-the-box Sound Blaster compatibility so all in all these are like dream specs for DOS gaming which makes this a very very interesting machine to be on the lookout for if you want to get back into DOS gaming on actual hardware uh, like I said because it has whatever you need also has some other neat features uh, these are the volume controls by the way by the side of the on the on the screen you also have um, dials here to adjust contrast and brightness so um, like I said very good monitor I refurbished this monitor as well I think on this one or if it was on another one that I have I don't know so on the back you have let me just adjust the camera a bit so you can see that. On the back you have uh, everything is nicely contained. I also put a network card in here. Uh, you can do that. Uh, there is also a model called the TV. The 524 uh, TV which was delivered with a TV tuner card. Which is very interesting because you can use this CRT, this compact unit also to, to receive TV. Um, signals uh, on the monitor. Uh, if you have it, you can also get that card on on eBay and use it. It's the same as uh, just putting it in here as well. You can turn this one in, into a 524 TV. But there is actually a model that included it, which was called the 520 the, the TV uh, model. Um, then you have you have keyboard, mouse, and you have fully compatible game port. Uh, you have printer port and serial port and your audio out if you want to not use the front speakers you can use this uh, these audio jacks uh, which also has a microphone jacks so you could use uh, this was also delivered with some software package for telephone um, so there's telephone jack here it's a modem and voice telephone jack because compact delivered this as a multimedia station for the home remember so you could actually call people and, and talk in a headset which was included with the machine when you bought it. Um, so you could also have an answering machine uh, in software. There was a lot of... Uh, this was in the middle of the multimedia hype. One of the cool features is this. You unscrew these two plug uh, screws on the back. And you do this. And this is the infamous compact tray. And this is this is your motherboard uh, so you detach uh, the entire back and you have full access to the expansion slots which is two 16-bit ISA slots here you can do RAM upgrades here do you, here you have your CPU uh, Sirius logic ship is here and there uh, and you have VRAM is uh, here I think this bank uh, so all in all this is a, a, a very good uh, or, or a very good uh, design you can also see the little cyclops here <laughs> a nice uh, nice engineering humor uh, so and and this is your entire uh, systems unit and then you have this connector slots into the front part of, of, of this which is on the front side here which contains the um, the power connector and and the, and the RGB out analog video which is soldered directly to the monitor which is here uh, and you have connectors for 
uh, the the IDE connectors is on the front part so you just slot this one back in you have a very nice way of installing new uh, cards expansion cards now this one is not cooperating with me so why is that let's see why it doesn't want to ha always always something that is going to be a slight pain can we get it to slot back in maybe we're lucky here we go and then you screw these back in and you have a really it's really nice that you can have this uh, I, I like the infamous compact tray with the handle pull out because it allows you easy access to the motherboard which is very very nice actually uh, here you go and this machine was here you can also see more of that compact form factor that it has it's really really nice it sits really nice on the on the desk as well um, and uh, it this one came with the original keyboard which is not a mechanical keyboard it's a pad stem keyboard but it's has a quite a nice feel to it anyway uh, and a compact mouse so if you just bear with me for a second I will hook this hook the peripherals up maybe and we will see if it boots as well just for fun and I will also not cut this out I will actually navigate the uh, in the back here There we have it. Sorry, there's a bit of a mess here in the workshop now because I can hardly fit myself in with all of the stuff going on that I have in the way everywhere. There's stuff everywhere, um, so you have to step over things all the time. Uh, the backlog for stuff to fix is a bit long at the moment, but okay. So let's see the machine in action. Like I said, I really like this monitor. It's, it's the exact right size as well. We can see the RAM test going on. So we have, like I said, 36 megs of RAM. Uh, and I will just hold the camera so you can see the boot sequence. Even if that's not very interesting. Now we're actually booting from the compact flash card, which is located down there, uh, for easy access so that I can pull out the compact flash card and just add software directly to it let's see what's on there this monitor is really really nice it's an excellent monitor and like I said compatibility is absolutely flawless on this it's like 
all the good parts you need for a DOS gaming PC uh, in one compact unit. So, uh, really like this series of machines. Uh, and I really recommend them if you want to get back into gaming on actual hardware. So we will look at, okay, let's see what we have. You could, of course, program on it like this. Like you could start Turbo Pascal on it if you wanted to. That may be fun. You can start Turbo Pascal. If you needed to, huh. actually forgot that I put Turbo Pascal on this machine, uh, but that might come in handy for later on. I'm thinking about giving this machine to my friend uh, that ori originally asked the question. Uh, uh, his uh, birthday is coming up, so I might include Turbo Pascal as well for him because I know he's an old Pascal programmer like me, so that he might find that fun actually. Uh, let's try something, I don't know. Some, uh, I have some games here. Uh, this is one that you. Uh, whatever. What's the name of the. Okay. Here's a game you should recognize, I hope. And now you can also hear the sound from the built-in speakers. And also filming a CRT screen is of course always a pain. And uh, yeah, you get these flickering issues. Let's film it from a bit of distance maybe picture is actually excellent in real life but it's slightly hard to capture on camera but picture color is excellent and you should know this game uh, probably by heart if you don't it's b17 flying fortress Uh, yeah, I didn't run the mouse driver, sorry. But as you can see, uh, sound works, everything works, uh, picture is absolutely excellent, but you can't see it uh, on the camera as well as I would have liked because of the flickering and, 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 and the lightness, the, the brightness of the camera, the, the color and and the, the the color and quality of the, of the monitor in real life is flawless it's absolutely brilliant and looking at this from a distance you can see that it takes up very little space on the desk and becomes an excellent little DOS gaming station I highly highly recommend this machine if that is your target Okay, and that was basically a short video demonstrating this machine and my recommendation. I would like to post this as my official recommendation for what to be on the lookout for if you want to get back into DOS gaming. Look for one of these. Uh, the CDS5 series in particular. Um, so you will get all of these nice specifications. Uh, in, in one compact unit and it's actually one of the best buying decisions you can make if you want to get back into playing DOS games on actual period correct hardware or, or on the actual hardware rather because on, on, on so, so it, it, it's, it's a very very good machine and you could find these around they were very popular in Europe as multimedia computers you could find I've got a few of the ones I have I have received for free even so but like I said expect to pay a hundred to a hundred and fifty US dollars or something like that for a, a, a good clean unit which uh, like I said is peanuts uh, if you look at what you're getting 
and the simplicity of of this. It's just plug plug in one power cord, keyboard and mouse, power it on and you're good to go. And if you want to uh, maybe put in a DVD drive or even better a compact flash card, uh, prepare that and you're good to go for you can play most any DOS game that you can find uh, with excellent compatibility. So that's it for today. Thanks. Bye bye.